alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, xi, omicron. Warriors for David, 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, from Issachar. Men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. Wouldn't it be nice to have some men of Issachar around right now, even women of Issachar, people of Issachar, who understood the times and knew what God's people should do? Knock, knock. Who's there? Well, it sure ain't the men of Issachar. Mark chapter 12. They tried to trap Jesus. Tell us, teacher, they said after buttering him up. Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? Should we pay or shouldn't we? But Jesus knew the hypocrisy. Why are you trying to trap me, Jesus said. Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. They brought the coin, he said to them, whose image is this and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then Jesus said to them, give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. Where is that kind of wisdom today? The kind of wisdom that doesn't fall into a trap. The kind of wisdom that doesn't see things just as black and white, yes and no. Vax or no vax, restrictions or no restrictions. Where is the kind of wisdom that cuts through the confusion, that cuts through the options and creates new options, wise options in the mix of the confusion? Certainly wisdom is not about creating divisions, taking shot at leaders, taking shots at people who have different opinions than you. If you don't do what aligns with my position, I'm out of here. Have you ever said anything like that? I've heard it said from every side, vaxxers and anti-vaxxers, pro-restriction, anti-restriction. If you don't play according to my rules, I'm gonna take my ball and go home. Have you said anything like that? If so, please go. You're not the kind of person upon which a strong, effective ministry will be built. As a bit of an aside, I'm kind of baffled by people who didn't lift a finger for years to try to reach their neighbors, who attended church when it was convenient, and now they're on the war path about every kind of restriction under the sun. It just seems so, so ludicrous, so, so ridiculous, so stupid. Pardon my blunt language, but I'm honestly trying to restrain myself here. Acts chapter 16. Paul and his companions traveled through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mycenae, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mycenae and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia, standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Too bad the Holy Spirit doesn't speak that clearly to us today. Oh, he does. Well, maybe we need to start listening. Well, maybe he only speaks to those who are on mission, like they were in the book of Acts. His mission, not their own little whiny social media echo chamber kind of mission, but Jesus' mission. I did stumble across some wisdom the other day. It was a pastor making an announcement about restrictions talking from Philippians chapter two about Jesus, the servant who emptied himself, who made himself nothing, who took on the form of a servant. And he asked the question, what would it look like for people with one opinion to take that attitude with others and those with this opinion to take that attitude with them? What would it look like to actually try to serve each other the way Jesus served us? James chapter one, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Wisdom for the asking. Interesting, it's in the same book that says you don't have because you don't ask. Have you asked for wisdom about your opinion about the pandemic? Have we? Have we had any prayer meetings seeking wisdom together? Speaking of wisdom, you know what I haven't heard very much of? I haven't heard very much of I don't know even though it's generally the case. For most of us, despite our opinions, even our strong positions, the honest posture would be to say, I don't know. Because the truth is, those we are choosing to believe, they don't know either. Sometimes wisdom comes to the conclusion, I just don't know. Why don't you say it with me? I don't know. I don't know. Feels good to be honest, doesn't it? When vaccines started rolling out, I had several people asking me about whether or not they should be vaccinated. And I said to several of them, 
Have you fasted and prayed about it? Have you actually sought God's direction versus direction from whatever the strong voices are in your world? Maybe that's something we need to do on a corporate level. Maybe we need to cancel our worship services, whether they're virtual or physical, whatever form, and spend some time fasting and praying, saying, God, what should we do? What is the path of wisdom in this? And really what I'm suggesting is not to pray for the end of COVID, but to pray for wisdom and knowing how to conduct ourselves in the battle right now. Lots of what I'm seeing right now on every issue and sub-issue of COVID and vaccinations and restrictions, lots of what I'm seeing smells like the flesh, not the spirit. Galatians chapter 5, the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions. Welcome to the evangelical church of 2020 to 2022. Let me try to land this before I blow an artery. Galatians chapter 5, 13, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. The enemy is not out there. The enemy is in the church, and the enemy is you and me. When we choose to fight for our shaky personal opinions based on incomplete information, rather than choosing to love and serve one another in Jesus' name, as he called us to, as he prayed for us to do. Isn't it time to love and serve each other? To represent Jesus? To be directed by the Spirit of God and the Word of God? Isn't it time to follow Jesus, not the divisive spirit of the age.